brain development um, expertise. Um, early childhood classroom experience. I would put parent relationship experience, right? I would put that information in there if that's the type of job I was going for. Well, for today and for in general for Dory Collins, I put these skills because these are kind of a overview, but also some of the things that I hold uh, that I'm proud of, okay? Um, program development. I created and developed the programs with Unincluded. When I started with Unincluded, it didn't have any programs. Okay, Mr. Garfield had an idea, he had a mission, he saw the, the working field, the battlefield, so to speak, but he didn't have programs in place. I came in and I developed that. Early childhood development, I have been able to create programs that are focused on early childhood, specifically kids read. Okay, making sure that we have books and activities that connect appropriately to the right age. Every time we do a kids read, we have books that are good for little, little ones, good for older elementary, and then we sometimes have middle school, right? But I have to have the understanding of what's appropriate, and I do because I've got experience, lots and lots of experience of teaching, and I'm certified in educational EC through four development, okay? Business development. I've been developing business now for the last, when did I get in here? I started my business in 2020. How many years is that? Four. Four years. Some would argue that I've been uh, developing business the entire time I've been doing Unincluded, but I've been officially established as a business since 2020, okay? And then uh, educational guidance. I've supported parents in educating their children. I've supported children, especially those who are struggling with reading. Um, I've helped them grow tremendously in a short period of time. I am really good. I consider myself a master teacher. Interpersonal relationships. The reason that I have relationships, the way that I do deeply is because I'm a good listener and I know how to respond when parents need me when youth need me, even though they'll leave my life because they're going through their, their stuff, they'll come on back because I have good interpersonal relationships. It's not just about business for me. When you're with me, you're with me, and I care about you, and nothing can change that. Okay? Um, and then grant writing. Up to this point, I have acquired over $1.5 million worth of grants. That's awesome. I think I can put that on skills. Okay? All right. So, certification. Early childhood education was uh, Texas, state of Texas. I've got that in 2007. And I'm also certified in special education, EC through 12. Got that in 2007 with the state of Texas. Okay. So, definitely want to put credentials. Credentials are things that people consider official. Okay. Um, if you say you're certified in something and you can say some institution certifies you, people are like, oh, she went and did the work and proved herself, right? Um, yeah. All right, so these are some memberships that I list because memberships are good to show, especially as an adult, but as youth, memberships are good to show. Let's see, hmm. you've got NAACP membership. Um, You've got 4-H membership. I need to get y'all some membership, but y'all can share with me some of the memberships that you have. Um, it's important to have memberships into different organizations because then that shows that you are connecting with other parts of your community. It shows that you know how organizations run. It shows that you know how to be part of a team, right? Um, and not just your own. It's important to show that. Professional summary. So, somebody read the professional summary for me. Over seven, seven years of experience in nonprofit. Okay. Go ahead. Specializing in program development and communication. Okay. Which really were just kind of restated, but gave a little bit more. Uh, who's going to read the next one? Membership. 
Second, um, the second one under professional summary. Oh, education. Under professional summary. Pro oh, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. okay. Profession and... Over seven years of experience. No, the one below that. <laughs> it's okay. It's the one... Proficient. Second star. Oh, okay. Second star. They proficient and assistant family. Assessing. And assessing family dynamics and creating tall... Tailored. Thank you. I can't see that. Tailored wellness plan. Very good. Last star. Collaborating. Oh Lord, collaborate with other organizations and local businesses to provide enrichment and training opportunities for youth and others. Very good, very good. All right, next is education. Okay, what does it say under education? I can read it. Go ahead. Master of Education Leadership. Concordia. Concordia. Concordia <laughs> University. Yeah. Graduate, graduated Concordia? December 5th, Austin. 2015. Very good. Austin is the main hub for Concordia. I didn't go to Austin to get it done. That was a class, a cohort that was offered in Belton. I was born in Austin. Good. You were born in Austin? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, I mean, Austin is kind of the hub for a lot of businesses and universities. Um, Concordia is a private university. Anyway, that's where I graduated from. Um, a lot of a lot of money that I, if I if I knew now, I may not have done that. But I can say I got that. Okay. All right. So then experience. You see how this is repeating itself, right? A lot of this is repeating itself. When we're doing our shared writing, what do we do? We say what we gonna say. We expand on it, and then we say it again. It's really important that when you are writing and sharing information, whether it's about yourself or someone else, you don't have to be super wordy. You just repeat so that people say, oh, yeah, okay, she's serious about that. Oh, yeah, she really does do that. Oh, yeah, she really has accomplished that. Y'all know what I'm saying? It doesn't need to be, oh, well, I need to find something different to put here. Oh, I need to put something different here. No, you just expand on the things that you already listed. So that they can see, oh, okay, oh, she did this. And then, if you are expanding more, when you, if you were to go for an interview, they may say, well, tell me more about that. Then you get to tell your story even more. Well, I got to go on KCEN. You have listed uh, uh, skills, public speaking and communications. Tell me more about that. Well, I got to go on the news. I interviewed uh, a local woman who was turning 110 years old. We were able to craft out how to tell her story, and I was able to present that on the local news station, right? Then you get to tell your story, because people are going to want to know more about what you've actually done. And so if you are good at putting what you know, then you'll have an opportunity to tell your story, okay? Y'all got what I'm saying? Um, okay. Yeah, so let's, we'll read that real quick too, because that tells the experience, uh, my experience as exec executive director of Unincluded Club. It's the thing that I have the longest amount of time with that I'm actually still presently doing. Okay, so let's read this first part. Who's going to read that? The Rose Program. Focus on entrepreneurship, leadership, urban agriculture, and literacy. Okay. Second. Collaborated with local schools, including universities, to provide learning opportunities for nonprofit clients. Okay. And then the last one. Developing long-term sustainable local centered funding practices. Okay. Hey. What is that? Tell me more about developing long-term sustainable wellness-centered fundraising practices. That's saying a whole lot to say. We grow microgreens and we sell them to sustain what we do. <laughs> right? Yep. Microgreens are healthy for us. Yep. It gives us wellness. We learn how to cook with it. We learn how to cook with it. We're sharing with cookbooks. others how to cook with it. Yes. We've made a cookbook. Right? We can sell the cookbook, we sell the microgreens, we can we can charge, we have it, but I write grants for it. I just wrote a grant to the city for cooking classes. 
That's what I wrote for. So we can make money off of doing these things so that it can sustain what we do day to day. That makes sense? Y'all got it? Okay. All right, so that, that's a resume for me. Now, in order to do business officially, you have to establish what you're doing as an entity. Everyone say entity. Entity. There are different ways you can set up your entity. There are S Corps, there are L Corps, there is DBA, and there is LLC. The one that I chose is LLC. It is Limited Liability Corporation. Y'all repeat after me. Limited Liability Corporation. Limited Liability Corporation is an entity that really sets outside of me, but it represents what I do. Okay? I'm not attached to it. If I was to go with the S Corp and L Corp and, or a DBA, I would be attached to it, and that means legally. And what do they stand for? Um, I'd have to look that up. Oh. I don't know S Corp, L Corp, or uh, C. Sorry, I'm saying L Corp, C Corp, S Corp, or D. DBA is uh, doing business as, and I'm gonna get to that because I do have some DBAs. Oh. But LLC allows you listen to the word limited. What does the word limited mean? You've got a limit on how far you can go with something. That there is a limit. It's kind of like the next much. word, but hold on. The next word, limited. Liability. Do y'all know what liability means? Yeah, it's the type of money or financial. Google. Go look at liability. What does liability look at? Mean? Come on. That's why I wanted you to get your device. What does liability mean? I know. I know. It's something that you buy, but it doesn't actually. Nope. Look it up. Google. 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 What does liability mean? It means they're being responsible for something, especially by law. Say it a little louder. The state, the state of being responsible, responsible for something, especially by law. Okay, so we've got. I'm gonna write it up. <laughs> we've got limited. Limit? Oh, that ain't no better. Okay. There's someone that cut over there by the Chromebook. I cleaned it out, but I had a big one earlier. <clears throat> it said what it was. It says they cause a lot of problems or embarrassment. Oh, let's see. Oh no, that's yeah. I hear what you're saying, but that's not that's not what I want y'all to. That's what I hear. We'll get there. We're gonna get there, okay? You're not all the way um, off, uh, Grayson. I hear you. Let me see if this one will work. Is that it? It don't matter. I can still take it off. Pardon me? So we said limited means limited, right? Then we said liability. Read that one more time, Theron. The state of being responsible for something, especially by law. Okay. The state of being responsible for something, especially by law. So that means limited responsibility corporation. That means if something happens under this, Dory Collins is not responsible. Or if she is very little. If someone tried to come sue this LLC, it won't hit me. It's a protection. It's a coverage. Now, in the front, this one costs the most to get started. It's the most to establish. And it's actually the most to maintain. And I'll pay LegalZoom to maintain it because I ain't got time. But it will ultimately cover me. Okay, so Limited Liability Corporation also allows you to have uh, what I said before, this word, let's see, DBAs. 
DBAs, okay? Doing business as. Y'all say that. Doing, Doing business, business as. So the LLC allows whoever, whoever owns, whoever started it, to do business as different entities under the LLC. I've done business as. Cultivate Events and Enrichment is still on the window over there. Super excited when I got that on because we opened this up as an event space. You remember last year, we all right, y'all, we got an event this weekend. Let's clean up so we can get some money, right? We can get paid. And put those tables on there. Real quick. That part. So I opened up as Cultivate Events and Enrichment, DBA. Then I established Cultivate Academy, CTX, as a DBA. So I'm doing business as Cultivate Events and Enrichment and Cultivate Academy CTX. Okay? And I just file them under this. But no matter what's going on with these, I am still Perfect. it's still limited liability. Yeah. See that? You see you get this umbrella of coverage when you establish this. Okay, <clears throat> if you don't establish LLC and you only do DBA, there are lots of taxes and fees and different things that come with doing business. And if you're not able to keep those things up, oh, it's so beautiful. Then you end up owing all this money and it's on you. They can come take your money personally, okay? Limited liability corporation, all I have to do once a year, and one day I'm going to be able to have to file something, but right now, and they just went up, it's so good. Unless you make $1.6 million, you have to pay nothing to the government, okay? If you're DBA, <clears throat> they may decide they want you to pay uh, your, well, they try to get me to pay I'm going to tell y'all about that in a minute. Don't let me forget. They'll make you pay for your service taxes. They'll make you pay for your equipment taxes. They'll make you pay for all kinds of stuff okay. with only a DBA because you're not sheltered by this. Okay? Um, when I first got into this building, some lady pulls up and she comes and looks in here and she looks at what equipment we have. And they actually send me a bill for taxes on my equipment. Mm, that's well, crazy. That yeah. part. You gotta pay for it. I have not stuff. paid, and I don't think that I have to because of this. Can they, can they do that? Girl, they, they doing it. You would be surprised what the government gets away with doing. So what you gotta do, you gotta do when you do business is you try to move as smart as you can so that the government takes as little money as possible. The bad thing about our tax code now is that small businesses are not covered. Small businesses, unfortunately, small businesses are the blood flow of our communities, but they get we get taxed left and right. And so the first thing you want to do is establish yourself like this. <clears throat> Some people do C Corp. Let's see, should I go there right now? Not yet. We're not going to tell what. I do know a little bit about C Corp, and I'm not going to go there yet, okay? But this will help keep you covered from having to pay too many extra things. It's ridiculous. So, uh, speaking on that, if they even help with that, mm -hmm. what's the total price? Like, what's the highest that they allow you to pay? What do you mean? For, For establishing this? So it cost me a little over a thousand dollars to initially establish, and then each year I pay like four hundred dollars. I'm getting ready; they're probably about to hit my account here in just a minute. October is always that month, so about four hundred dollars to maintain it per year. Okay. Yeah, but that keeps me free of nickel and dime, nickel and dime, nickel and dime. That could cost you thousands each year. Yeah. How much are they trying to have you pay? You just told right me now, you right now it's sitting at like twelve hundred dollars. It's ridiculous from when I first got in here because it keeps accruing because I ain't paying. Uh, is that why you told us 
Is that what you were going to come back to when you said? No. Uh, you were going to come back to something. Was that that was, oh, that was it. That was, was it. it. That was Wait, it. Yeah. So they're making you pay that much because they came and saw your equipment. And you were like, I'm not paying that. Y'all That's crazy. That. And you already paid taxes on it. Sales tax. So, Man, it's crazy how the government makes you pay for stuff over and over again. It's wrong in so how many they, ways. How they so can you get rid of it? Cause I ain't know who she was. I promise, if I'd have known who she uh, was, I would have locked that door. <laughs> and she would have been like, she, and I'd be like, did she? Did she come in and? Tell she you? came did in she with the inconspicuous car. It didn't have no title on it, so I had no idea. Oh. <laughs> uh oh, it's fine. It's fast. Ooh, that part. But can you get rid of them or no? What DBA? You can close them. So, um, yeah, you can close. There's really no reason for me to close any of the ones that I have because even if I'm not doing business as that, say I want to do business as it again, then I can just do business as this again. This doesn't cost me anything. Once it, I mean, it cost me to establish them. It's about... I think it cost me like $300 to establish these. But then once that's done, it's done. Oh. And then, you know, say I want to open a cultivating events in Richmond in Dallas or in Austin or, you know, I can do that. And it's legally already set up. And people can write checks to me. And um, I had your mom ask me. She was like, well, I don't know. Will I be able to uh, claim the tuition that I'm paying on my taxes because it goes to this? And I'm like, yes. Because this Cultivate Academy is a DBA of this. So, yes, she will be able to go and claim it on her taxes. I will let her know. <laughs> they don't really give you much <laughs> when it comes to tuition, unfortunately. It's so bad. Um, they used to give teachers a tax credit, and they still do, but it's so tiny. It's like $250 for tuition. They might, the only thing that they let you write off on your taxes really when it comes to childcare is if uh, like uh, Navi and them, no, daycare. You can't get nothing for 250 nowadays. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, but they don't even give you the full 250. They give you like a percentage of it. Thank, it's a, it's a joke. Um, so anyway, okay, got that done. Okay. <laughs> All right. When you go into business, you go into business for a reason. So now this is time for you guys to share. If you could start a business now, what would your business be? Mm, that's a good question. Thank you. My mom's already doing the podcast. No, your business. What would you, you would do a podcast. No, actually I do right. a YouTube channel. Godfrey, what would you start if you could start your own business? <clears throat> One, two. Go ahead. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. So a game development and a smoothie business. All right. All right. Huh? A lemonade stand. All right. Naraya. I want to create a place for kids where they can just come hang out create color and have stuff to do instead of like creation just running, That's what we did. Just creation running around the side. Like the you. mall, like the mall is down. There's nothing to do over there, like create a place. Man, where kids if we could just get that whole mall. Yeah. It's for sure. Yeah, it is. No one's going to do anything. <laughs> just get that mall. We, might, we might be able to get that mall, y'all. A lot. Um, mine would be a comfort chat line. A comfort chat, ooh, a comfort chat line. A comfort chat line. I'm speaking that. <laughs> okay, Doris, what would you start? Bracelets and necklaces. Bracelets and necklaces. Maybe me and Doris can have our business together. What? <laughs> okay. Um. Now, next question. Next question. Who is your customer? When you think about what you want to start, who is your audience? Who is your customer? Now, really think about that.
Because a lot of times people think about what they want to do, but they don't think about, okay, who do I need to appeal to to come spend their money with me? Who is your audience? Probably kids. Who will want your smoothies? Mm-hmm. Who will want to come to your creation station? Who will want to listen to your podcast? Who will want your lemonade? Who will want your necklace and bracelets? Who will want to be comforted? Who will want your game? Which yours is a developing thought, right? If you develop a game, once your game is done, you're like, oh, okay, I know these people don't want this, right? Why don't I know the station? Say that again. I know where to sell them. Okay, so then if you know where to sell them, who is the seller? What's the name of that? Cons- the cons- no. Wouldn't they be the consumer for the service? Or the the who's selling it? Oh, us, the producers. Uh, Say it. The distributor. If you know who your distributor is, then you can figure out who the customers are. Well, who are the people who go and shop there? Okay, that's how you figure out who your customers are, right? Others, others, you got to think, who is your customer? Who is your audience? Who are you going to appeal to to bring kids into your space so that they can be creative and hang out and just enjoy their life? Who's going to spend the money? Who's got the transportation to get them there? (laughs) The parents, right? So that's your audience. Now, the kids are also your audience, but you got to get the kids there. So your real audience is your parents. Okay? Alana? Um, I would say the people to like pay for it. I would be there to come for anybody who needs it, Mm -hmm. but the people who would pay for it would be the adult or the caretaker in charge of that person. Okay, but when but you're thinking about self, they would be paying for themselves. Okay, so that makes me feel like you are thinking more for your your space, your hotline, the place where people can come get comfort would actually be more younger people. Is that what you're thinking? I'm not thinking that. Let me okay. start rephrasing it. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying that it would be for anybody. Okay. If it's a kid, of course, the adult. But if this is an adult himself in need of comfort, mm-hmm. maybe pay it for it. Got it. Now, and with I, your message of comforting, will you... Hold on. Let me make sure it's not something we need to answer. Okay. Will you be sharing the word of God when you comfort people? Yes. Okay. If you know that with your company you will be sharing what you know and understand about the Word of God, then your audience is most likely going to be what? A believer. Believers. Believers. Okay? Why is it so important for us to know who our customer and who our audience is? So we'll know if they'll want it. We'll know if they want it. You've already decided that they want it. So we'll we'll know what to say. You'll know what to say. You'll know, okay, I know my audience is believers, so when I share the flyer about my business of comfort, I'm going to make sure I include Matthew 5 and 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Right? That's straight from the word of God. They're going to believe that this is a place that they can tap into and truly receive healing because I used the word of God to message, to to market. To market. Y'all, marketing is absolutely necessary. Something I'm struggling with right now. (laughs) I'm struggling with marketing because I'm not sure how right now. Um, we did the market two weeks ago, 
well, almost two weeks ago on Saturday, and I requested that I get pictures and videos. I didn't get pictures and videos. Why did I want pictures and videos? To market. Because that's what I was going to use to market. But I didn't get them. So I can't. I put a flyer out there, but people like to see people. They want to see you in action. They want to see kids selling their product. And so this next time, we're going to get pictures and videos. Okay, so that I can market for the uh, market for the next market. Okay, so my audience go to Matthew 20 and 16. Matthew is towards, uh, sort of towards the back. It's going to be in the New Testament. Uh, Matthew is before Mark, and you found it? 20, what page? 960. 960. Wait, you said? It's 20, so it's chapter 20, 16. Oh. verse 16. You got it. We want to make sure we get there before we all read, before we read. This is just, there's another place that uh, talks about this in the, in the Word, in the Bible, in the instruction. <laughs> but let's get there and then let's, are you there, Alana? Oh, I'm at Matthew, but I'm just uh, making sure to be canceled. I am. Okay. I just got to make sure to be canceled because I don't want to make it. Uh, 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 uh. 
Many may be called, but few are chosen. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Many may be called, but few are chosen. Does that align with what the world tells us? No. Not at all. Not at all. So, my audience is the last in the world. According to my life history, according to research, according to how people are living now, according to who God sends, sends, S-E-N-D-S. When I first started doing this work, he told me, do not recruit anyone, take who I send. Do you hear me? Do not recruit anyone, but take who I send. So that's why I say I have a hard time with marketing because I'm not here to recruit anyone. I'm here to just be prepared for who God sends. Y'all see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a little different when you're doing kingdom movement. Tell them what you're doing, but not in the spirit of come here, come here, come here, come to this school, come to this school, come to this school. Why? That may not be who God has chosen. What did the rest of that scripture say? First shall be last, last shall be first. Many will be called, but few are chosen. Understand that if you are sitting here in this school right now, you have been chosen. Okay? Okay? It's a special call from on high for you to be sitting here right now in this school. I can guarantee you what you're learning in this school, you're not going to learn anywhere else. I can guarantee that how you get treated in your this school, you're not going to get treated anywhere else. I can guarantee that the things you get to eat in this school, you will not get anywhere else. And I guarantee the activities that you get to do in this school, you're not going to get to do anywhere else. Okay? With this requires focus. I know who my customer is. I know who my audience is. I can't necessarily go out and say, oh, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one. God is going to say... He's going to he's going to prick me. He's going to say, "Up, oh, pay attention." They'll probably be be with you soon. A parent will come to me. Pay attention. What you need? Okay, come you sit down. Parent will come. Listen, listen to what they're saying. A young person will come. Hear their heart. Hear what they're saying. Or some young people will say, come, and he'll be like, that's why I got them here. Yeah. You see the folly? You see the foolishness? That's why they are here with you. Because it doesn't mean that the foolish can't be chosen. But it does mean that the foolish needs a little cultivating. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, if you don't understand, just keep listening. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Many are called, but few are chosen. That's who uh, Doris Creating Inspire Consulting LLC is here to serve. Primarily, I consider it black girls. Secondary, I consider it black people. I've grown up in this community. I'm a product of suffering. My mother died when she pushed me out into the world. It is known that black women are the highest population who die at childbirth because the system neglects us. Then I was in the system as a ward of the state, baby girl Brown, that was my name. Had a foster parent. Foster children, their last 
and a lot of spaces. Then I got adopted into a light-skinned family, no less, and got reminded all the time of how I'm the dark-skinned child. Then I went to school with primarily white people and again got reminded that I'm the black girl in the room. The mascot, dance for a story. Okay, got treated pretty badly in school. Mainly by students, that means the parents are teaching them, but some by teachers. I was friends with a lot of black girls, a lot of people from the hood, those who didn't have a lot of money. They got treated even worse than I did because they didn't have money. They didn't come from middle class like I did. I had a mom and dad in the house. The dad was terrible, but I had a mom and dad in the house. They got judged because they didn't have mom and dad and they didn't have money. So a lot of the things I got access to, they didn't get access to, but many of them were smarter than me. Black people, not white kids, black kids with no money and not two parents, they got treated horribly. First shall be last, last shall be first. The Lord has been showing me who is last. Hmm. You said it wrong. It says, so the last shall be first and the first shall be last. There we go. And so many be called, but few chosen. Very good. Thank you. The Lord's been showing me who's considered last in this world. But the good news is, if we're considered last in this world, where are we considered first? In heaven. In wait, 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 wait. Where? In heaven. The kingdom. Because the problem with saying heaven is we always think we're waiting to get to it. If I am declaring thy kingdom come then I am going to be ready so that when God sends me who the world says is last, so that we can cultivate to be first, I'm not waiting to get there. We are creating it on earth as it is in heaven. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here. We've done some amazing things here. Before we started the school, we used to travel with Mother Earth News Fair. We went to all these different states in the United States. Some of these young people never left their city, let alone their state. Some of the people they got to fly, they had never flown before. And mainly it was black girls. I always attract mainly black girls. But now I've got God is sending more males, more black boys. Because the truth is, and I don't care what anybody in the world tries to tell us, if you have a female counterpart, you have a male. The reason the black girls are is because the black boys are. Everybody else is. Truth. It's sometimes hard for us to say that because we don't want to admit that that's our position, right, in the world. We think that that's going to manifest something new. It's nothing new. It's just reality. But if we want to create something new, we've got to be real about what we're facing. You talk about, like, people who are addicted or people who are dealing and battling with something. Twelve steps when you're trying to get past an addiction. The first step is what? Do y'all know what the first step of 12 steps is? You have to acknowledge that you have a problem. When people are fighting drugs, when they're fighting alcoholism, when they're fighting anything, they have these things called 12 steps. The very first one is to admit and acknowledge that there is a problem. There's a problem here in this world that was set in motion long before we got birthed in here. But we are in position now to manifest the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, okay? So that's what we're doing. That's my, that's my business. 
I don't always know from year to year what it's going to look like, but I promise you God has blessed it from year to year because I'm being obedient to who? I had a white family come and be part of the school last year. Guess why they left? Because they were uncomfortable with the truth. That's not my problem. Because guess what? Now they're here. And we're going to look and see how much that tuition is. And they're going to move through this world. And it's going to be pretty easy for them. Okay? I was, I was glad. I was proud that they were leaning their heart in. That they were listening. But it got too uncomfortable. So they could no longer be here. Their time was up here. But they will never forget what they learned. Hopefully. The word also tells us, do not harden your heart when God comes. God was in them, around them, that entire year. The hearts weren't, they weren't hardened. We enjoyed having Elena and Mark and Rebecca. We felt some hardness, but mainly they were soft. They received what they needed to learn while they were with us. Okay? Many are called and few are chosen. So how? How do I serve the who? Let's look what I've, what, what I've done so far, okay? Started with Unincluded. This is now, I think, my 10th year with Unincluded as Executive Director. Created programs, traveled the world, traveled the country, um, all kinds of stuff. Wrote lots of grants. We got lots of opportunity. Now, Cultivate Academy, third year. Founder, head teacher, lead developer, CEO. Rocking our retreat, soon to be the owner, current manager. Okay? This is how I'm implementing the how for who. Me and Miss Latanya were trying to figure out how we do a retreat for black girls. Because I don't know if you noticed, in there, all of the rooms have uh, names of stones, amber, yeah, and ruby. Oh, yeah. How do we do Rock and Iron? Which Rock and Iron retreat? We're going to do an amazing retreat. <laughs> which Rock and Iron retreat? You'll find, where, uh, oh, he didn't get to go. Okay, well, you'll find out here in just a minute. So this is how right now. Okay, this is, this is what God has delivered on how. With business, you got money. Money, bills. Okay. We're grateful. For unincluded, this is about all our expenses each month. This is about that. Sometimes it goes over. And that's really just for us to live. Let me tell you about kingdom living. We live for free on a seven-acre property. Our bills cost about that much at that seven-acre property. I'm talking about what comes out of unimproved. Okay? How many people can say? <laughs> now, let's go to Cultivate Academy. <laughs> this is about how much it costs to run Cultivate Academy each month. Sometimes a little more. Each month. Yep. $10,120. Okay? And I'm nowhere near the infrastructure that I'd like to have. So it's probably going to double <laughs> by the time I get to where I want it to be. Rockin' R, now that we paid it off, about $1,500 a month. That's what we're looking at. That's good. That's kingdom. Okay? So total, this is our cost to run business. Now, I'm not talking about feeding the Collins family. I'm not talking about paying the car payment. I'm not talking about putting clothes on our back. I'm not including that here. Because that costs money, <laughs> okay? This is for running business. This is utilities and things like that, okay? 12,120. I put red because anytime you're looking at a financial report, if they're using colors, they're gonna use red for the money that's going out. Because you're getting the red. <laughs> now, for revenue, 
you'll see green because there's money coming in. Unincluded, this is about how much we get per month for donations. This is not include if I'm able to get a grant. We don't want to put grants because grants are, you might get them and you might not, okay? Cultivate Academy for tuition, $2,050. Rock and R average, $7,500 a month. Some months, like uh, in the spring, one month it doubled this. But like this month, no, next month, I ain't getting nothing. December, yeah. we'll get a little bit because I'm going to get some money from Jacqueline. So I have to save knowing that it's going to be low. But what my hope is is that I can get more people to come in and retreat. But at this point, this is what we're looking at. So our total is $2,000. So if we're looking at this, and we're looking at this. Are we getting are we getting the job done? No. No. We're not. We falling short. But thankfully, <laughs> I'm a kingdom daughter. And he keeps making a way. Up to this point, what I've been doing, I got a, a grant through the city of Temple. I've been using that. So I'll take some of the things, especially the food that we buy, and I'll put it in for reimbursement. And so with that reimbursement, I've, you know, been able to make up or we'll get like a special donation from somewhere. God makes a way. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do is uh, compare because our tuition here is $550 a month. That's for the first child and the second child is $500. Because I'm serving... What do we say? What's the scripture say? Usually, if we're serving the last in this earth, most likely there's not a whole lot of money coming in. So I know that I don't want to put the burden, the heavy burden, on tuition. Because then I can't serve right so i work really hard people call me crazy what are you doing i had somebody come sit with me and say don't go harder try to tell me i'm doing too much if i had to listen to him i would not be sitting with this right now i would not be i wouldn't have this if i listened to him this is before i even got this if i had listened to him i would be trying to heavily burden and I would not be getting the work done. Okay? So, this is $550 a month for the first child, $500 for the second child. Now, I want y'all to, I need y'all to understand how intentional and purposeful this process is. I looked up St. Mary's. It's the only one I had time to find. Uh -huh. That's the monthly tuition at St. Mary's. How much is it? $1,566 per month. This is a private school. And the reason the private school is so good is because we can do school how we want to do school. But in order to do that, we have to get money from somewhere. And it comes from them. They primarily uh, um look to tuition. They do fundraise, which we're doing with the market. We don't have to do better, but we, we're working on it, right? They do fundraise, but they primarily get their funds from tuition. Now, let's go to Act and Imagine Academy. Y'all pull it up and let's look at the tuition there. So you should be able to just pull that up and see how much. All of them should have it. It's a 
This is in North Texas. Or you can just Google. See, this is when they don't tell you that's the price. $6.95? Are you sure? This is funds. It's fourteen thousand a year. So fourteen thousand divided by nine. Baby. Divided by twelve. No, nine. Oh, that's right. Summer. That's one thousand five hundred and fifty five a month. Central Texas Christian School. Yeah. I'm sure that's cost a lot to be here. I'm the one over here in North Texas. Is that the one that I went to? Acton. Well, Acton, so their tuition's going to be pretty uh, about the same across the board. I put Acton. Oh. Wait, it's Acton or Action? Act is A C T O N. Okay, because I cut Action. Okay, here. Christian, let's see. Tuition. All right, so tuition. One thousand and two hundred. They said for preschool. Let's go to high school. That's because they get supplements through the state. So let's if we go to high school. Ninth through twelfth grade is twelve thousand one forty-five. Eight hundred dollars a month. Seven sixty. Uh, 1240. Uh, did you do the math? It's 13, uh, 1383. Yeah, who's that? Jesus. Montessori. Montessori schools, uh, Central Texas. How? Who is that? Oh no, it says six hundred five a month. I'm yeah, just doing what school that is. Yeah. For what school? Action and imagination. Okay, tuition and fees for Montessori, we got
the cost is triple in most cases going to one of these schools. $4,735 for Okay, it's fine. Okay, so if I'm staying obedient to this, that means I have to figure out other ways to make money, okay? There's no way that I can do what we're doing with only this. It's a good time for us to talk about it. So when we do market, because we've got market Saturday, we'll, we'll make sure we have this in mind that we need to sell all our product. And we need to have more than what we had last time because we, yeah. well, we didn't sell, sell all of it. We, took, we gave away $42 for those of you who read the email. We cannot do that, okay? We give a lot of food during the week when we're doing lunch and we're doing cooking class, but when we're doing the market, we have to sell so that it goes into this, okay? Yes. I mean, I had a couple of ideas yes. for the market. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how much did we make from our first market? Uh, about $85. Oh, okay. Well, I was mm -hmm. thinking maybe something just a slight different. Mm -hmm. From a one that I was thinking that we could offer more than like one microgreen a liquid. Like a, oh, more than just lemonade? Yes. Yeah, so like maybe we could do like a microgreen tea. It's a thought. Also. I was thinking that we could offer them a bit more than our like sandwich and our salsa. Mm -hmm. If it's okay, I have to admit I like them myself, so this is just an idea. Mm -hmm. What if we offered like a sandwich and those uh, chicken wraps that Miss Alicia does with mm -hmm. the microwave? I like that idea. And I really like that idea. Hang on, Lana. <laughs> <laughs> now, in it. order to make money, you got to spend money. Okay? What we don't want because 85 was what we made last time. What we don't want is to go in creating a whole lot. That means we spend a whole lot and then we don't make profit, right? Um, your your mom had sent me the pizza that y'all made. I was like, that would be really good. Did you see the burgers? Because we got because mm, we got that oven. That would be a really good thing to I'm offer. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking that and. Uh, so when it gets cooler, because Saturday I think the high is going to be like 83 or something. So it's actually going to get a little warmer on Saturday. Um, at the time that we're doing the market, it's actually going to get warmer because it ends at 2. Um, so the lemonades probably, we probably will stick to the menu that we had the last time. See if we can make more money. Then we can take some of that money and put it into doing more for the next time. Okay, and then um, we'll get pictures and videos, and I can do a really good job marketing and promoting for people to come for the next time. Okay, or even when we do our cookbook, I do recall we would sell our cookbook. What I definitely say is what would be a good idea for like the students mm -hmm. where we could have it with our micro greens. Where we sell more than just like a, our a greens, sometimes mm -hmm. we could be doing our recipe book. Or we can actually let that creativity go free, like our canvases. Mm -hmm. It takes nothing for us to do that. That's why right. we're at this school. And we can put a, what we want on it. Yep, I and love that. for this to say, well, look at this microgreen. These yes. microgreens, that gave our children the nutritious energy that they needed from the vitamins that hold within. I love it. And it is stimulating their brain. And look at their creativity flow and go. That's and a great idea. Like a so all of that takes production, and that's something that I want us to learn to do because I can't carry all of that, okay? The part, the, the part of you guys being part of the school is learning entrepreneurship. Well, entrepreneurship involves marketing. We made the flyer together for Helping Hands. I want you guys to learn how to edit videos. I want you guys to take that part, right? Because if I am getting no grant, that can cover us when we have low months, right? Or even give us some increase, then you guys can take on creating the content. There's a lot of videos that I've uploaded to YouTube. I asked Crystal if we can get some people from KCEN to come in and teach us how to edit YouTube videos. So we'll work, we'll see about getting that done. Cause okay. I don't know, I don't know how to do it. I thought I did, but I don't. <laughs> I tried. Um, what'd you say? Did you say something right? Somebody said something. I said we could probably do it. 
probably figure it out. Y'all probably could, and you could probably put it into iMovie too. Mm-hmm. Probably. All right, so we're gonna take a brain break because this was a lot of information. Um, you guys, I want you to take a break, but when we come back, I want you guys to give me some things that you have learned from this, okay? Y'all just received 